Oh, it says live now. Are we there? Are we? This is waiting for the naughty librarian on my page, though. Yeah, it's still not pulling up on YouTube either. Oh, wait. Yep. Up. There it is. I see it now. Why don't I see it? Oh, there we go. Ha! Yay! Oh, let Hi. me mute that. I was hearing us talk after the there fact. I see it now. Yeah, I had to quickly learn to mute the other, mute the YouTube channel in the background, or I was getting all kind of ridiculous feedback, and it was painful. <laughs> okay. Yay! All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. <laughs> such, a, such a struggle this morning. <laughs> such a struggle. Okay, like, if anyone's watching, I don't know if anyone's still here to watch this, but like the beta studio fucked us up hardcore. By the way, look at this mug. You're using it, yay! It says <laughs> the naughty librarian. I love it very much. It's a belated Christmas present. <laughs> very belated, like three months belated. <laughs> yay. Okay. okay. Who's watching? Eight people are watching. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Hello. Okay. So, where's this book? Hold on. I got this book. Certain Dark Things. Sylvia Morena Garcia. Um, okay. Let's just start off. How many stars did you give it? Like, let's go full Goodreads. I um, gave it three. <laughs> Simple solution. I just stuck with three. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's a three star. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? Did it go off again? It says an error occurred. Please try again later. I don't know. It's still loading. I'm still looking at it on YouTube. Yeah. Do you guys? Yeah, see it? it's still live. It's caught up on YouTube and it's good. Okay. Because mine just says an error occurred. Ooh, it's still going. Because okay. I, as I, yep, yeah, and Jessica's in the chat. She says she sees this. Okay, then never mind. I just can't see myself on YouTube, but <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. There's goblins in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, geez, I don't know what the hell, but this morning has sucked. Girl, <laughs> we've had a, we've had a struggle. <laughs> I blame the time change. The time change messed me up partially, and then Google Beta Studio. YouTube always changes shit and then they don't tell you what they change. Like, God. yeah, because I was like, you're like, yeah, I just to say start broadcast. I'm like, there's nothing that says that. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to, we had to like jump through some hoops. They'll like change struggle. it and they don't say anything until you go to use it and people complain. And they're like, oh yeah, we changed it a month and a half ago. It's like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, put, put, put it back. There's nothing broken with it. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. We're done with it. Hey, Tabby. And Dichones, am I saying that wrong? Okay. Well, hi, everybody in the chat. I see I see the texts. Sorry, okay. <laughs> do me a favor because I am also half blind. I know some of you from like other Voxer chats and stuff. And if your name on other platforms is different than what it is in YouTube, please like say something so I know who you are. Cause I have people sometimes I recognize in here and I never say anything cause I don't see you. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had like a heart attack, but I'm okay now. <laughs> Certain dark things. Let's get back to the book. Okay. So I think we all gave it three stars, actually. Oh, what? Did you finish saying? <laughs> I did not. And let me tell you why I'm struggling with it. I think you know, even finishing it, I won't be able to rate it because it's not like, I don't think it's necessarily like, bad or lacking I think it's like it's just like some people like the character stuff and then some people like the setting so if you can do well with one or the other you might still be okay but I just don't feel like the balance was good so I'm struggling really hard with it that's exactly it it's just I like the idea and it has really mm -hmm. cool ideas and it just it wasn't delved into deep enough like all of the breeds of vampires and how like geopolitically how all the countries dealt with vampires so they all just kind of moved to mexico because mexico is just like not doing anything about it <laughs> they all formed cartels which was like really cool but we didn't get into a lot of like the cartel structure yeah one of the things that i thought when i finished it i was just like if she was to revisit this world with 
different characters and focus on the characters, not just like how the characters fit into the world, what you were saying when we first started reading it, I would enjoy way better than this. My camera is crappy, sorry. But <laughs> um, yeah, I just, there was so much focus on like the world and like everything else, but the like the characters and their story, it wasn't like a huge importance of the story. And I just, I couldn't connect with it because of that. It, yeah. It very much felt like the world was built. And then after that, it was like so much weight and time was put into the world that it's like, all right, now these characters and they just feel like very last minute, second thought, like, oh yeah, let's throw some characters in this shit. It's but. like, oh shit, there's people in this story? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't just sell a book based off of the world alone. Let me figure out something and just throw it in there real quick. So that's like, that exactly though is why I have a hard time with the rating because I am a world building person. If I can see how much detail you put into the world, I am there. But there's supposed to be like at least something with the characters. And for me, there's yeah. like nothing. Yeah, it was um, a bit lacking. I think I, I said this in the Voxer chat, but like, I just want to feel clever. So I'm going to say it in this video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I read books like this and I call them Tin Men because structurally very sound. However, they're desperately seeking a heart. Mm. Um, and it's I just love like, that, by the way. Thank you. I feel clever. I get to be <laughs> clever this morning. It's just, um, they they put so much effort into this really cool world and then just didn't explore it. So it feels yeah. like, it's just, I read her blue balls about it. It's like, <laughs> girl. Accurate. Yeah. And Tabby, I think it is a standalone. I don't think there's any sequels. No, I think she's working on totally different things right now. I think she's got actually, isn't it like a a Mayan world or something in the book she's got coming out this year? Oh, I yeah, know. I think so. Yeah. So I'm interested to see that because I, I know her world building is good, but I just wish there was more time on the characters. So yeah. the, the main vampire, what was her name? Atoll? Yeah, Atoll. Atoll. I spent so much time living in Atlanta that I always want to say ATL and I know good damn well that it's not her name, it just aggravates me. But she felt like, I think she was supposed to kind of be like Lestat maybe, she's supposed to be kind of this airy, aloof, like, not necessarily emotionless, but she was supposed to appear that way. But to me, she literally just felt like flat when like, I got nothing. Yeah. Also like, okay. This is just like me being picky, but it's just like, how is their house crest a hummingbird? Mm. Like those little rainbow birds who eat sugar water? Like they're not very <laughs> threatening. <laughs> like, they just want to have talons and shit. Like, why is it a hummingbird? Like, Choices. there's a lot of cooler birds. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> I think this book, I'm really not sure if it's supposed to be YA or not. This is one of those books that fall in the middle of the line, but I think if it had been a adult and she'd have went like deeper into like the whole vicious vampire thing it would have been so much better so much better yeah uh, she took to... sorry go ahead i was just because she took the route of having this random teenage boy she's like oh well i need to feed off him to survive but let me fall in love with him in the process so i was just like it didn't you know basically what we've been saying over and over it just it wasn't enough and i needed uh, a whole lot more of everything pretty much except the world building like everybody was saying the world building has been it was pretty good just yeah 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 domingo was like he was like a mary sue however yeah. i did hear someone say the term gary stew for a male version <laughs> and i'm like into it <laughs> so he was kind of a gary stew you're just like so wide-eyed and bushy-tailed about everything. Like he kind of makes me think of the dad from uh, Rugrats. Wasn't his name Stu? <laughs> Stu Pickles. Every time somebody says Gary Stu, I think of Stu Pickles, and I'm like, accurate, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Domingo, like, so like his little heart, but he was just so pure of heart that it's just like, which is weird, right? Because she like yeah. set him up to be this kind of like not necessarily man of the world because he's like what 17 18 but you put him in this position where he's like seeing a lot of shit he's essentially homeless or was homeless he you know makes his living from digging treasure out of trash and then he's just like little lamb eyes and it's like that didn't go together it was frustrating so yeah. like, this is a really quick read 
but I know like what halted my progress is like at the very end of chapter one where, and it's so stupid. It's just me being nitpicky, very nitpicky where after she feeds on them and she, she's like, you're going to have to be, you know, very careful. You're going to feel weak. Your iron's going to feel like you need to drink this and drink this. And Are you ready to go home yet? Okay. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was very much one night standing. She's like, okay, well, I'm done with you. So I'll call you an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Like if she hadn't spent so long on, you know, you're gonna feel sick. I don't want you to feel blah blah blah. We need to take care of it. And she's like, in, in anyway, um, your cab's outside, so get the fuck out. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I really wanted to like go into um the villain more. I forget his name right now. The necro vampire. Oh, I, I like to forget about sharks though, because that was like a cool visual with like their teeth becoming like shark teeth. Like that was really cool, but it's just like he has this obsession with Adel, and all we hear about it in the book is like, oh, she like rejected him once at a club, and I'm like, I need more of his personality because it just doesn't. I don't know. There was like his deep, you know, fudge core of evil wasn't there, and I wanted to see him get more like obsessive. Right now, he was just acting like a, you know, a man child having a temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah, it feels very much like the and people are gonna crucify me for saying this, but I felt that way with the darkling and everybody's like, oh why are the darkling so awesome? And I'm like, but why? <laughs> Cause he's got shadows and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you still misunderstood. No, Kaz Brecker, you are not. Kaz Brecker is like he like warms all the cockles of my little dark heart. I love I'm so that. ready for the Netflix show like that she just don't know. I know. <laughs> We're just gonna start talking about books we like better than this one. <laughs> okay. What I really did like though, because the world building. So I do appreciate that it wasn't because I swear to God, all vampire stories tend to be like European or European based. So there was no like England, London, no Victorian era, none of that stuff. So she had this this super unique world that wasn't like European washed. Is that a thing? It yeah. just wasn't like yeah. it had like everything you could ask for. Like it, it. I think you're frozen, Lauren. Oh, I thought that was me. So it looked like someone who lived in like. No, Lauren, you're frozen. Come back. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> oh no, she's really frozen. Uh, are oh. you back? You back? There we go. I think we're all frozen because you guys were frozen in mine. Oh. Yeah, my my service is crappy right now. I think everyone's up on the internet, so I think YouTube just hates us. No, that too. <laughs> We're having a morning. We are having a morning. But Lauren, what you were saying about how it wasn't whitewashed with this European mythology mm -hmm. was really cool because I did like seeing all of the other types of vampires from all around the world. Like there was like the Asian version, there was mm -hmm. um, you know, the Latin American version. And I liked seeing all those differences. I would have wanted to see more of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like have the loved little... to see them in person, like actually in the story. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this little old Asian vampire just hopping around because he really can't do anything else. I was just like, oh, okay. Because I read the stuff at the back. So I was just like, oh, okay. Well, how do they fit into the story with everyone else? We just, I yeah. mean, we got to see a few, but. I think yeah. we only experienced like three of the types of vampires throughout the entire story. So, yes, I think that's again where it's like a lot of time and effort maybe oh. on the world building and nothing on characters. They're like last minute, so they felt like thrown in. So I like I saw a puppy and I got very excited. Lawrence, <laughs> 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 are talking so you get bigger. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> name still, he doesn't have a name. And you, mm, you stink. I know. Hi. Good morning. He's a brat, though. Don't get excited. He's a he's a little asshole. But he's adorable. He's one of my special edition comics. That's still in like the cardboard. So yeah. it's more like I keep running away when other people are talking, so you can't see me because he just snatched it off the bottom shelf and ran across the room with it. It's like a uh, dog. Nah. Come here. Okay, um, people are asking questions, hold on. Uh, Jessica asks, what's one main way this book could have been improved to get it to the level of the books you love? I focus more on the characters. Mm -hmm. Like on the, okay, focusing more on the story of the characters, not just the characters. It's just, she just put the story, the, put the characters in there 
and she was just like, okay, we have this basic plot line. They're going to do this, 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 and then Sorry. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, that is perfect. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> See, that was one of those things was like earlier. It's like, it would have benefited from being like more firmly in the adult world, like anything, smut, violence, just anything that wasn't like just washed over because that just added to the feel of everything being dis disconnected, I feel like. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Adol like totally like took Domingo's virginity and we just, it was off page. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? He's so Gary Stu. I wanted to see him have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gary. Like, throw that kid a bone. <laughs> There's like this moment in the beginning where he made me roll my eyes so hard, like it physically hurt. I, I don't know what it was he said, but it was when he was trying to figure out if she was a prostitute and like propositioning him or not. And I was like, God, man, you are painful. What is this? He was like, but it's okay if you are, you know, I'm just not for that. I was just like, what? Oh, shit. Um, I cannot. I think I could have definitely gone with like maybe some student took a moment to like write backstories for the characters. Like even if you don't include them, I feel like just the practice of writing them would give it would change like the way they react to stuff and it made them feel more believable. Maybe because if he's gone through X, Y, Z in his background and you as the author know it, maybe that would change the way he looks at things. Like we don't need to know why, but there would be some consistency or some flow or just some personality, some something. Yeah, it's just, that's exactly it. It's just, I don't know why anybody was doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. The story was good. I like how it was plotted yeah. and like the pacing was good. It's just like, she's like, oh fuck, I have to put characters in this just so the story has like people in it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, like it was just, it felt like an afterthought. Yeah. I wanted to know why, like why, like I was thinking about the villain, like why does he have this fudgy core of evil? Like what is going yeah. on there? Like why is that all? the way she is. Why is Domingo so Mary Sue? <laughs> so pure of heart. His heart is so pure. <laughs> it's like, boy, like, get an edge. <laughs> That's the thing that annoys the hell out of me, though. Like, in this world, like, I don't know, I mean, some people like that you can live in this world that's supposed to be fairly dark and still be, like, this little ray of, like, bubbles and rainbows, and but that annoys the fuck out of me, because I don't feel like that's realistic. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not realistic at all because if you live in a dark world, even if you have a positive outlook, you still gonna have like a dark outlook on everything that's going yeah. on. Yeah, like you still have to have like some level of street smarts. And for that, there needs to be some level of being like dark because you have to know it's a possibility that if I take my stupid ass outside at one in the morning, <laughs> I might get eaten by a vampire. Like you need to have some kind of negativity in there to just be street smart. And I feel like you're just like, do, 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 do. Nothing bad's ever going to happen to me. I'm good. Yeah, he was kind of the Mr. Rogers of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> All he was missing was a cardigan, I swear to God. <laughs> it was the same thing with, oh, fuck, what was that character? Radu from, um, oh, shit. oh, but I like Radu. So oh, like, Radu hurts there's... my soul. He's so painful for me to read, like, the whole first book. I was like, I can't take this shit anymore. His art gets better, though. He, so he would just be like, I need someone. Will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? I still need my nurse. Like, I'm 17, so it's like 1400s. I'm a whole grown-ass man, but I still need my wet nurse. Do like, oh <laughs> you guys see my sweatpants yet? Hold on. <laughs> okay. This series, by the way, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to read that first book. I have the this first This is the one. second book. It's the first one I could grab off my shelf. <laughs> I'm, very, I was, I'm, I'm very, like, I think picky more so with male characters and female characters. It's partially because I feel like Radu, I felt like it was a little tropey. And maybe it's because he was homosexual that I immediately felt like not necessarily triggered. But I was already sensitive to it because... Like, so you have this homosexual character and you just made him a giant wimp. And I'm like, you couldn't have made him badass, like, anywhere Oh, he gets badass, though. That's what someone told me, but they said it's, like, for, like, five minutes in the second book. And I was oh, like, no, 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 no. He's, like, a spy and he's, like, helping to conquer uh, Constantinople. And, hmm. like, he has so many sword fights and, like, epic war battles. Like, he's, like, swinging a sword around. Okay, then he for sure gets better because the first book, I swear to God, if he had needed his nurse or his sister or his mom for, like, one more paragraph, I was going to weep. And he, like, saves kids. Like, he's, like, really gallant in book two. Like, he'll be, like, 
and he kind of has a boyfriend and you're like, oh. That's better because I, I, I bought, I had book two and I started it and then I was just like, I'm not ready for writing. I think I like saw his name and was like, nope. Well, it's Rod it. and Radu for all of the books. They're the, both the narrators for all of them. Who is? Rada, oh, Radu. Radu and Lada are both uh -huh. the narrators for all the books. No, yeah, lovely. So that, I need to be ready for that. I want the third <laughs> book, but I'm also like, why is there an exploding pomegranate on the front of it? I mean, you gotta put something on the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> um, no, the third book hurts because I mean it's it's historical fiction, but based on facts. So we all know what happens. Yeah, in Black Cool, like nothing good. So you kind of know it's not going to end well. But like mm -hmm. that third book is just like going around town killing everyone I like, and it's like, <sighs> who's going to be alive at the end? Like two people, dear lord. I still need to read it. I want to read the Buffy one too. I'm just getting off track because I, I think I thought of it because vampires. Because when I wanted to read um, Dark, what the what the hell is the name of that book? The one we're talking Christian about series. Like I was low key expecting vampires because somebody told me that it was fantasy. So it's like Vlad the Impaler. It's gonna be vampires. Yes. No. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought it was gonna be that too. It's not at all. <laughs> I'm holding grudges. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, guys, um, certain type of things. We keep getting off track by talking about books we like better. <laughs> um, let's see if anyone in the chat is asking questions. Uh, what kind of book it is, is it? I don't know. What kind of book is this? I guess it's urban it, fantasy. It's urban fantasy, but it's, I don't know, it's different than urban fantasy I'm used to, maybe because it's that weird line between like YA, new adult, and adult. It's in like the gray area, which means you can't follow all of the urban fantasy rules, so to speak. So it's a weird mm. one. I always thought it was an adult book. I didn't get like YA out of it necessarily. I don't know but if it's the age like ranges, maybe. I don't know. Something about it to me reads YA, but like the subject matter, because the world is darker and there's like cartels and all this stuff, it's weird. Yeah. You know who I kind of really liked in the story? I like that, like, the little hunchback Nosferat Nosferatu character who lived in town, the old guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like I him. liked his little, like, creepy, like, <laughs> hunching, like, just creeping around. Like, I really liked him. Quite and, awesome. like, okay. like, I I had, I don't know, I think they discredited my theory in the book somewhere, but, like, I was like, is he Adel's dad? Mm -hmm. Because his mom, her mom and him were like friends for like a long time. And then like, he's kind of protective of her. And then um, I think they said in the book that like species of vampires can't interbreed. But I'm like, did he bang her mom? <laughs> <laughs> I like the dog too. Tabby says that she likes the dog. The, the dog, yes. I mean, dogs make everything better as Laura knows with her puppy. <laughs> well, not particularly this puppy at the moment, because right now he's chewing on my boots. Fuck. Oh, no. They're not my Uggs. I don't even care. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think about the, the cop, the lady with the daughter? I wanted to get into her brain so much more because I felt like her story could have been really interesting because she's the only, like, vampire hunter in the book. And... I don't. I was like, I don't know. Like, I was just thinking about what her motivations were, and I felt she was one dimensional, like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And then, like, her ending. I'm sorry. I'm assuming everyone's read this except for Lauren. <laughs> 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 but um, Lauren, can we spoil the ending for you? Yeah, oh, the sure ending was terrible. Wait, what? I didn't hear you, Lauren. As I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna make it. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the lady cop dies in the end of this, and. All I was thinking, about, like, she has a fucking kid. What's going to happen right. to this kid? Like, there's a lot of loose ends that bothered me. And, like, she was doing so much for this, like, teen daughter. And, like, you never got to see their relationship barely. I think they made breakfast once. And I was like, I don't fucking know this kid. I don't have no, like, emotional <laughs> attachment to her. But, like, I don't want her to be orphaned. <laughs> yeah. So, like, definitely this could have benefited then probably from first person. Since Jesus. <laughs> I just get really excited every time I see the puppy. You just try to take a header off of the geez, this dog. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like this book probably could have benefited from first person since the characters were so flat. Like I think that's when I need to be in their head so like I know what they're feeling because like here it's just blank face. And if the character is blank and there's no ever point of view or nothing distinctive happens to disprove that, it's just like these characters 
suck. <laughs> yeah, and the ending was so unsatisfactory because it was just like, okay, m- most of the people died that was in that fight at the end. Mm-hmm. And then Adam goes off. And then, what is his name? Domingo ends up with her dog because the dog isn't actually dead. And I was just like, and then he has this like thought or vision of her in Mexico. Or, no, she wasn't in Mexico. She was, where did she go? I don't know. She was she was chopping down vines and he was just like, oh, okay, she's okay. And I have her dog and we're all good. And I was just like, so that, <laughs> that's the ending. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. It was it was weird. The whole like the whole process, and then that's just the way she decided to end it. I was just like, what was the point of this? That's so frustrating. Yeah. Like I can see where where um it could be like a series because there's a lot left unsaid. Mm-hmm. But like even if there was a series, like I don't know, I didn't like this book enough to like want to read them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It might just always be unanswered questions for me. I think oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. that if it was like book one in a series, I would be willing to say, well, maybe it was, you know, first book, they were trying to figure out X, Y, Z, whatever. So I would read at least another book if the characters was my biggest thing to see if the characters got better. And then if they didn't, I probably would just be like, oh, well, fuck this. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, comments. Uh... Tabby is really upset that the villain's bodyguard died. He deserved better. I was hoping he would actually like get to live his life outside of the vampires because that's all he wanted. Yeah, but, he's like, yeah. these motherfuckers won't leave me alone. <laughs> like, he was upset and crotchety. And like, I, I appreciate crotchety characters. And again, I didn't get so attached to him because I didn't really get attached to anyone. But like, I did appreciate like, his sarcasm. He was a fun, sarcastic character. I uh, let's see. Um, Jessica says, "Do you ladies read books with three star ratings?" Anyway, yeah, it depends on the genre. I think I feel like there are certain allowances made for different genres of book. Does that mm-hmm. make any sense? Yeah, I feel like for YA, people rate things higher. So if it was a three star in YA, I would know it really fucking sucked and I probably wouldn't read it. But if it was a three star in like urban fantasy, which has a much smaller like subset of readers, I would probably check it out anyway. Just really weird. But I think like the more popular the subgenre of book, I'd be less likely to re- read it because people make a lot of excuses and like, like for instance, like Sarah J. Mass, I really don't like her books all that much, but they have like five star ratings. So if she was ever to write a book and it collectively got a three star rating, it must have been like hot ass garbage. <laughs> I like Sarah J. Mass though so far, but I'm just starting her, my journey with her. So maybe I haven't been jaded yet. But what um, series did you start with? I'm reading Throne of Glass first. So you didn't read the. I haven't read Court of Thorns and Courts of Whatevers. Okay, yeah. that's good. I feel like that's a good way to start. I did the opposite. So it was physically painful when I went from. The act of, act of a court of whatever the fuck to throw on a bus. Just like no, no. Yeah, and three Starbucks like um like on averages on Goodreads. And honestly, a lot of the books I put up, I pick up are like three point eight stars. Like the average, like a lot of them are that. So it doesn't necessarily bother me. It's just like a lot of people have rated it. And some people are petty bitches and they rate things one star. And like I've her people like i was talking to um my friend amy okay sorry shameless plug plug for amy because amy spaulding is an author and she writes really fun contemporaries i was talking to her the other day and she was like you know people in goodreads just write things to keep it in their list so they mm-hmm. think they can read it later so they write things one stars because they're just not excited to read it but they might read it someday that's stupid because Goodreads literally has lists for that shit. Like I know, and she's like, "Stop doing that. What is your deal?" Yeah. <laughs> like, people wow. do that sometimes. They just write things like, "I'm not really excited about it." One star, and it's just like you haven't read it. Yeah. So, you know, grain of salt here. Like I, I don't know. Like I read a lot of things that are in the three range, and if it's higher than three, like I get more excited about it. Mm. But something in the three range doesn't necessarily put me off from it. I think on the other hand, too, people do that with. Um, like rating the books too high because they're really excited to hear about the book or they like the premise of the book. So when they hear about the book, yeah. they're like five stars and it's like 200 five stars and the books comes out in like a year and a half. So there's not even an arc yet. And it's just like, how in the hell is this book rated so high? What the fuck? Yeah. 
But I think what, what I'll do sometimes if it's a book where I'm on the fence about is that I will pull up five star reviews and I'll pull up one and two star reviews and I'll see like what each person liked and disliked. And if I tend to find things where it's like, oh, I, I would have thought that was stupid too, probably, then I'll go, eh. But I do try to give them the, the benefit of the doubt and at least look at the reviews if it has a low rating and see why. Because some people are petty. So there's like the Wolf of yeah. Wall Street and someone gave it one star because it didn't have a wolf in it. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wish I was making that up. I'm really not. I, I don't doubt you. That sounds completely accurate. The internet is full of crazy. Someone pointed that out to me, and then I searched for it, and I was just like, oh, yep, there it is, right on Amazon. One star review. This book had no wolves in it. I'm like, I, what? I, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what else? Like, sometimes when I'm reading books I don't like, I just kind of, like, start making up stories that I like better. Does anyone else do that? I'm like, oh, that'd be cool if they did that instead. And I start go off on a tangent in my brain that has nothing to do with the book. <laughs> so that's what actually got me started writing because I I would see things and I'm like, no, why didn't you do it this way? And then I think I complained about it so much. I was like, well, dumbass, just try writing it. See if you can do any better. Then maybe you'll either do better or quit talking shit. One of the two. <laughs> You're not going to stop talking shit. <laughs> You're right. You are 112% right. <laughs> Let's see, Emily Rose says, have you ever had a book you were excited about and it just sucked? Fuck yep. yes. Which list do you want the longest <laughs> for? How much time we got? Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other live show. <laughs> yeah, right. So what's one of yours, Brandy? Um, the worst one, I'm trying to think. Come back to me. I had a worst of list for last year and I can't even remember any of them. What about you, Amanda? Oh, Lauren, you're with me on this one. Um, Stalking Jack the Ripper. You fuck yes. <laughs> I was so excited. I'm like, oh, I haven't really read a Jack the Ripper story and everyone really likes this. And I thought it was going to be dope. And I was like, how is this happening? Am I reading the same book? Is someone pranking me? Uh, so for me, it was, I think the main one was Beast Made of Night. Because this is... Um, African fantasy, and this was before Children of Blood and Bone came out, which is why I was side eye in that book. Like, mm, we'll see. Because Beast Made of Night has this really fucking cool premise. It's like beast based stuff like your spirit and all this other crazy shit. And the premise was fucking amazing, but it was first person point of view or close third from like a teenage boy. And it very much read like a teenage boy. And I just wanted to gouge my own eyes out because he basically was like, thought everybody was in love with him. He was cool shit. You couldn't tell him nothing. <laughs> so frustrating. And then I think the other one was Flame in the Mist. And it messed me up so bad to the point where that is now a verb. And when books disappoint me, I say they flame in the mist of me. <laughs> I really liked Wrath in the Dawn, though, and everyone says Flame in the Mist is so bad. Yes. So oh, that's why I was so excited because, like, Wrath in the Dawn I was obsessed with. I think I've read it, like, three or four times in the first year that I got the book. I had the book. I have another signed copy of the book and the second book. Like, I love that book. And then she's writing, like, a 47 Ronin slash Mulan. I was just like, fuck yes, give it to me. I don't care when. Like, I stalked the release of this book, and then you get it, and it's like... I don't know what happened, but there was like, it was all tell and no show. So the character was supposed to be like really intelligent, really just, just, she's supposed to be kind of like how Selena was supposed to be in the first Thorn Glass book. Like she's supposed to make all these crazy like plots and just really sneaky kind of, and she didn't make any of these moves. And I'm like, still waiting for the really smart ass character you told me about. Like, it's me day now. And then yeah. I think she was dressed as a boy, like her and the one of the male characters was in love with her, but there was no indication that she was a female. So at the end of the book, it was just like, oh, thank God you're a female. Because for a second, I thought I was gay. Woof. I was like, oh my God. Fuck <laughs> wow. Uh, it was yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. It was I just, I couldn't. I was so mad. Oh my goodness gracious. It was fuckery. I'm still really butthurt about that it. Was it was like when I first started book two, but I'm still salty. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy, did you have a book? Mine will probably be A Court of Wings and Rowan just because I was so excited at the Akamath. 
-hmm. And I was just like, this is going to be like the perfect finale to this trilogy. And it just all went up in flames. So I, yeah. I was just like, it wasn't a terrible book, but compared to Akamab, I was just like, what, what, what happened? Yeah. Um, Favorite, she was just, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to get into it because you haven't read it. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I was about to go off, but I'm gonna leave it until you read it. If you plan on reading it, so well, I'm going to read it. it I, okay. I, it's not gonna put me off. I have heard like good things and bad things, but I'm like, I don't know. To be fair, I, like, I rated A Court of Wings and Ruin five stars because like I binged it, and it's a pretty big book. So I'm like, I must have liked it. I read it in one sitting, and it's just her books are one of those like she's just one of those authors that when you finish, you close the book, and then a day later, you're like the fuck was that so many problems but you still enjoyed it so like what the hell yeah i think my thing was that i didn't feel like that at the end of it i would like at the end what you say you felt a day later that's what i felt as soon as i finished it because i was yeah. just like you went to process like it almost makes me wonder did you have somebody else help you co-write acomath because you went into this one and it's just like the characters were completely different. You had all of these things happen and then you just took them back. And I was just like, but, yeah. but, but what? Like I was sad about it. But at the same time, I was just like, but there was no consequences. You were just like, psych, <laughs> that is not going to be relevant. You know, anymore. I feel like that's very yeah. much like that fit her, not her demographic, that fit her style and her personality as an author. Because when she started killing off people, I was like, bitch, she coming back, whatever. I didn't even expect, I just knew it was going to happen. I was like, whatever, it's fine. But like, Akamath was one of my favorite books of that year, believe it or not. As much as I bitch about her writing, and it's because like she did a thing that a lot of authors don't do, whereas the character's traumatized and you actively see like the PTSD later. And it's accurate, like it's real. You see like real world stuff in there. And I really appreciated that. And there were things, of course, that I talked mad shit about in that book that I know are problematic. But for me, like that portrayal outweighed it. And then you got to A Court of Wings and Ruin, and it's just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I rated it five stars, but like right after, I was like, wait a minute, but this bitch is a monster whisperer. Like everything, people scare me. These motherfuckers are scaring 500 year old, 1000 year old, 1000 year old <laughs> warriors. And Fair's just like, yo, I got this. <laughs> So I, I get that. I get that. But I also feel like it's unfair of me to change the rating, so I still leave the five star rating, even though I feel like it was crap, only because like I don't have a worse reason for like bringing it down. And I know other people will still like it and be happy that you know this character died and they came back, and whatever. But yeah, no, that really annoyed me. I felt like that was very cheap. It's a cop out. You got this war. Nobody, nobody, like everybody was all well and good, like this massive war. Then don't forget the 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 Hail Mary at the end, this character who hasn't been seen since book one showed up in all these warships and all these mm. people like, I'm gonna say all <laughs> where in the fuck did you come from? All right. Did whatever. you read oh no, you didn't read Kingdom of Ash, did you? No. I think a lot I... of the things that she did in Kingdom of Ash was as a result of people complaining about a quarter wings and ruin. And I was just My like magically Asian character who was white. For yeah, the eight books. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, that mm, yeah, that whole situation. I was just like, wow. But I also heard that a lot of the stuff in that book was pulled like almost directly from like Lord of the Rings and all this other stuff. But I haven't seen all the movies and I have never read the books, so I can't. Yeah, I have no experience with that, so I didn't have anything to say about that. But I was just like, yeah, I was I was on the fence. I gave both of those finales three stars, though. So I was just, I don't know. Maybe she just doesn't know how to wrap up stuff. But it was good moments of both. Amanda, you got Catwoman, right? Did you read it yet? I did. Did you like it? I did. Okay, because I have it and I'm terrified to read it. <laughs> I genuinely, genuinely really liked it. I thought it was very good. Uh, it's a good Catwoman story. If you want a good, um, basically, it's Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman kind of form a girl gang. Oh, I'm here for that. I'm here for it. I am too. Catwoman's like characterization, super dope. I really, really liked it. Harley Quinn in, in uh, Poison Ivy, uh, mm. they're not the best characterizations because Poison Ivy ends up being just kind of like an angry vegan. 
Mm. And um, Harley Quinn just needs like a good hug and some therapy. Like it's kind <laughs> of like. But I feel like that's low key accurate though because Poison it Ivy is, is like that. Is. And they're kind of you know like in the comics is like Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn do have a relationship in yeah. canon, and so they kind of have that in this book too. So I did appreciate that you brought that in. But yeah, I was just like, they could have been more badass than they were portrayed as. But uh, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Well, she has a um, adult fantasy coming out. It, didn't it come out this year? I could I be making so. that up. Sarah but... Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think anything's coming out by her. I, I don't know. Nothing's come out they, by her this year so far. They said it's supposed to come out later in the year, but there hasn't been any updates on it since they first announced it. So mm. we'll see. I think maybe they're recovering from the Act of Frost and whatever they were covering from that little back. Uh, yeah, we don't even mention that. <laughs> I have you ever unwrapped that copy? Longer than the actual book. <laughs> so, you, sorry, I'm okay. going to moderate and bring us back to <laughs> uh, our, our the actual book. book. <laughs> um, okay, certain dark things. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it is a vampire story. And are you guys still into vampires? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm never not going to be into vampires. I mean, right. the yeah. craze is kind of over, but like, is there ever going to be a time like you're not into vampires? Because like, no. yeah, I, just, I think the vampire not. aspect of it, it really made it really cool. And I hadn't read like a good vampire story in a while. Yeah. I think that like, as soon as you said, like, like as soon as you asked that question, I was like, what kind of question is that? Because you said like right after I'm never not going to be in a vampire. I was like, exactly. Yeah. I think there, there's so many different ways you can play with it. And it's just like in this book, like she put totally different cultural stuff in it that we usually see from it, which made them really cool. So I feel like as long as people start to like, like I mean, there's nothing in va vampire is not like a real active like thing. So there's no right way to do them because it's all fiction anyway. But I feel like as long as people continue to play with it, like, I'm gonna be here for it because somebody is gonna have a really fucking cool version and I'm just waiting, like, give me, please. Yeah. yeah. But I could just also be one of those people because, right, like, this whole book club is urban fantasy. So, like, I need all of the werewolf and vampire books, like, forever. Yes. Give me all your werewolf porn. I will read it all the time. All 13 <laughs> of them. It. I think I am quickly getting to the point where there aren't many left. Uh, okay, so do you remember the first vampire book, movie, or show that you read or saw that you really got you into vampires? That's from Tabby. Ooh. Are we disregarding Twilight? No. Yes. Like, okay. that, was, <laughs> <laughs> that was like the very first one because I, oh wait, you know what? No, it wasn't because I read that in high school and I read something before that. So um, the first book series that I read that I, read, I started it, I think, when I was like in fifth or sixth grade. It's the Blue Blood series by Melissa De La Cruz. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't like her now, but that's one of my favorite series. And it's weird because it's a vampire slash fallen angels mix. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's, yeah, I'm currently rereading it and it's not the best, but it's like one of my <laughs> childhood series. So, nostalgia is really getting it for me right now, but... It's on Scrub audiobook, so if anyone wants to check it out and you have that, then oh. it's there. Okay, what about you, Amanda? Because I can't remember mine yet. Oh, I remember mine. Um, so I was a kid who probably needed much more parental supervision than I got. <laughs> and I remember watching Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie. Uh -huh. And like that came in 1994. I was like six in 1994. <laughs> And I remember seeing it not long after. So, <laughs> like, no one was paying attention to what I was watching. And I remember watching that, and I was obsessed with vampires. So, um, I didn't understand a lot of, like, the content. Mm -hmm. But I did like the atmosphere, and I thought it was really cool. And I think it was, like, also there's boobs in it, and I'd never seen boobs before. <laughs> so, I was like, what? I think I was, like, second or third grade, and I saw that. And I shouldn't have been watching it, but I did. And, uh, yeah, so I think that's the my first... My first going with vampires. So mine, I don't know what it, it wasn't. Twilight. It was I don't know, but Twilight is the first one I can think of. But Blade. I'm Blade, sorry. I was just getting ready to say Blade. Blade was the first movie. Blade yeah. and Underworld, but Underworld came later. Blade was dope. 
The first books I can actually remember though are the Not Anita Blake, the Mary Gentry series by Laurel K. Hamilton. Those are not just FYI, those are not child appropriate books, but I was reading them at like 10, 11. Inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> Highly inappropriate. Okay. Let me ask this question because it's kind of a polarizing answer. Personally, I know it's a bad movie, but I freaking love Queen of the Damned. Like, I I've love it so much. It. Am I the only one? Because like I, it's such like it's so bad, but I love it. It's so bad, <laughs> but, I, but I just love it so much. I've never seen it. I was Me seeing, I wanted to see it because I loved Aaliyah. I mean, I loved Aaliyah, but I think it, it just took one person going. That was stupid, and I was like terrified to watch it. I was like, I, I don't want to see it if it's bad. It's it it is it's bad, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, it's like that kind of bad that you're like. I know I shouldn't eat 15 cookies, but I'm gonna eat them anyway. It's yeah, like so like there is there's a difference though, but like that's see that's the problem is that because amongst like my family, I'm the only person with like this kind of taste in movies and books. Mm -hmm. So like if they say it's bad, I don't know if it's really bad or if it's bad like the Mortal Instruments movie, which was bad, but I fucking loved it. I mean, it was bad. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> bad, but I actually like the movie too. So you, <laughs> might, you might like Queen of the Damned. <laughs> We'll have to do like a watch a thon. Like a like we'll all like watch it together. We should it's, do one in live tweet it. We should. It's it's amazing. Like when I met like my current best friend, because you know, mm -hmm. people have different best friends throughout their lives. Yeah. But like we went out and got drinks and she kind of was like, you know, I really like Queen of the Dan. I'm like, oh my gosh, me too. Are we best friends now? And then like <laughs> we're so like it brings people together. <laughs> I'm here for it. We need to do one. Uh, we should try to do one a month or one every other month or one when we have time to just do like a live show of an urban fantasy or a fantasy movie and just live tweet that shit. That'd be dope. We're Granted, I'm saying this for like ideas. selfish reasons because I absolutely love just like venting and ranting all over Twitter as I'm watching a film and like <laughs> screenshotting and chipping. Like that's my shit right there. We should do that. <laughs> Okay. Um, what else should we talk about with this book? Crowd of Vampires. Um, I did like the Latin uh cultural things that they were putting into this. I would have wanted to go deeper into like the Mayan mythology because I haven't really read a lot of books with Mayan mythology. Mm -hmm. Same. So I thought that was really cool. And there's like a lot of like fertile ground there to like build something really dope. And yeah. I'd want to see something more with that mythology because I, I never see that in urban fantasy really. I think this has a potential to kind of be like, kind of like the uh, Jesus uh, Dark Hunter series, but less urban fantasy, more traditional fantasy. But if she would just take like all the mythology, like the Latin American mythologies that we barely ever see in books, and just explore those for like a whole series, I would read thirty of those books. But yeah, not with these characters. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> the whole pantheon that's not being explored in anything and i'm yes. like i'd be down yes. got a lot of weird stuff there's a lot of bloodiness like i'd be in <laughs> be dope. anyway i don't know so yeah i think we all agree world dope characters not so much yeah but it did spark a good discussion about a lot of things i don't know <laughs> everything We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. Did really. say they didn't like Strange the Dreamer. Am I tripping? I just saw it. Where did it go? That was no, Tabby. Tabby, yeah. why? <laughs> you know what? Strange the Dreamer is like so bizarre that I can't even explain what it's about to people. But I also think um, Lady Taylor's a genius for writing it. Like I liked it a lot. But I can get why people might not because it's very weird. Yeah, it's so it weird that like it's hard to like get into. But like I think if you're like in for the weird. Mm -hmm. Like you're good. You're good for the I whole. Think, thing. Like, her writing style sucks me in. Like it sucks me in. Whoa, sh dude. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I think like her writing style sucked me into the point of like I really didn't give a fuck what the book was about. I was just here for it because it was like this very pretty prosy fantasy style of writing without being so heavy that you have to go, what the fuck are you talking about? And just like make yourself pay attention. I love her writing style. Yeah. It like hurts my fear when people say they don't like that book. It's it's very lyrical. Like I, I don't know. I'm not like so attached to it that I'm like bothered <laughs> by people not yeah. liking it. But yeah. it is like it is a lot to take in. Yeah. Like it is and it's a very high fantasy book. 
I liked it. Oh, do I have yeah, this thing? It, it, it's a chunker, but I think too, if you just listen to it, because Steve West is the most amazing narrator ever, if you just listen to it. Yeah. Oh. I gotta show this, hold on. My friend uh, gave me this like print of Laszlo, I just love it, it's pretty. <laughs> it's awesome. it. I don't have any Laszlo art yet. I have her, I have bookmarks from the, uh, I can't think of any of her damn books today. A daughter of smoke and bone. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I have like these bookmarks that came in a Luma Crate box, mm -hmm. and I'm with them, but I don't have any Laszlo art yet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, let's see. You can over here by the filter. So if I just suddenly run off camera, it's because he's trying to snatch the hose free again <laughs> and decimate my fish tank. But he's such a wiggly puppy. He is. Like, like I have one of the big canister filters on my fish tank, and the hoses are very like tentatively placed in there. So if he just like puts his body weight on one of them, and it pumps like so many hundreds of gallons a minute. So if I don't get to it quick enough, it'll just like half the fish tank will go just all over my fucking bookshelves. Oh gosh. <laughs> which is what he did this morning, which is what part of the reason I was so late. He just like. Because he's clumsy, he just went and rolled and tripped and his little fat butt landed on the hose and just snatched it free and it just, it's like a movie, it just went God damn, but it's so adorable, it's a clumsy puppy. <laughs> I can't, I can't with it, I love it so much. I'm sorry, I know he's a nuisance right now, but he's just a clumsy fat puppy and I'm into it. <laughs> Come here. You're too interested in that. Come here. Time for a kitty game. He's the name. And then he's also like, he has, look at, he has a heart. Oh. Yeah, he's got a heart. A little heart body. Now he just needs a name because I've been calling him, hey, damn it, stop for a week now. <laughs> Maybe, okay, people in the chat, what should Lauren name her puppy? Do you guys have any good ideas? Hold on, there's a phone. Let me hang it up. Oh. Come here, you little turd. I got, so right now it's between Baloo, but he's white, so it doesn't fit wholly. Raja, because he's a little brindle in these areas. And then I got nothing. I was trying to think of a really cool mytho mythological name to give him, but he doesn't fit him yet because he's nine pounds. And he likes to lick stuff, so maybe he could be Zeus because he likes to lick, <laughs> lick brindle. <laughs> Zeus did like a lot of things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> No discretion whatsoever. <laughs> Anyone who wasn't Hera, he was like, I've got a licking for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I lick you yet? No, come here. <laughs> We're working on it. Someone suggested Loki, and I'm like, that might be accurate. He is okay, mischievous. So I have, we need some more, like, urban fantasy suggestions because I am running out of it. It has been so hard these last couple months to just think of like suggestions to put forth for the vote. So I have like old ones like these, like these Marie Lou books. Like what is this, Dirk and Steel novels, which were in the like 90s or early 2000s. So we already know they're gonna like suck compared to like um, today's urban fantasy. But I'm getting desperate here. Oh, I've got I like, have, like I yeah, have. One, two, how do you guys feel about rereading stuff? Because I have a lot of books that you guys, I know you have already read. I don't know how recently you have read them, but I haven't yet. So I didn't want to pick stuff that you like, okay, I just read that. I don't want to reread it. Now. I don't mind rereading. So like Night Chaser for March, that's going to be a reread for me, but I really liked it. So I don't care. Like there's, it's rare that there's an urban fantasy and I'm like, this sucks. So like usually I'm open to rereading them. I think Certain Dark Things will be one of the first, second, because the other one was the Jane Yellow Rock, like the first book. That one was cool. We're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I read that one, and I was like, I Yeah, it, it didn't help that I, I read Tread of, Trail of Lightning first, and I was like, bitch, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> bad. I'm probably the only um, one who has not read the Black Dagger Brotherhood. I don't know about you two, but I have not. But, 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 uh, yeah, right. we, we've already talked about this, okay? I know. I, know. I don't even want to say because I have the unpopular opinion and I did not like it. 
So most I know. Here's the thing with that. Them, like there's only like a couple out of them I like. I think they're very large and they don't need to be as big as they are. They do a lot of like Game of Thrones style character switching, which in an urban fantasy mm-hmm. is not fun. But I will say I have like I don't read them in order and I go and read through my favorite characters. So like um Zadis, his was really good. Like if you read Sherilyn Kenyon's books and you like um Ash's story or Styx's story, that level of like suffering and like heart hurt was in Zadis' story. But I also pick and choose. So I don't read them in order, I don't read all of them, and I skip around. Mm. I don't know. I read like the first two and I it just it wasn't my jam. I tried. I just. I don't think me and J.R. Ward like my reading style and her writing style just they don't match. Which is weird because you think it would, but yeah. like I've consistently not liked anything read by her. Yeah. So I think it just might be me. I think she kind of has <laughs> this like where it's kind of supposed to be like Crashly Cole's like character style, but it just doesn't fit. So they're not coming off like cool and snarky. They're coming off as tries way too fucking hard to be cool so their her characters are kind of annoying in that matter sometimes yeah i don't know there's a lot there's a lot i've been like um some people do give me suggestions sometimes like in my videos um Mm -hmm. there was this one that sounded cool i forget who writes it but it's called how to save an undead life and i was like that looks really good um there's a lot there's a lot there's always new ones. Yeah. So then now I'm getting into this like paranormal, like this historical paranormal. So like I have these ones, these certain wolfish charm by Lydia Dare. And they're not bad, but like I feel like you kind of have to judge them differently because some of them have that like what would you call them? They're they're more cutesy than they are like serious paranormal. So they're they won't be like trail of lightning. They'll be like they're almost like cozy mystery level of cutesy, like rom com type. I don't know. Paranormal I love romance rom-com is weird. Yeah. You gotta be careful with that shit. Hey, stop it. Um there's a lot of suggestions. If you guys wanna give us suggestions, you should tweet us at book spirits because we're always taking suggestions we do we're gonna have to come up with a new book for april like that's already what we're thinking about (laughs) yes i always i also have two like the one amanda that you sent me that i keep trying to sneak into the vote which i really want to read the heroin yes i sent that to you it's 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 good the author is local so she's really nice sarah coon Oh, that's cool. And then I'm doing the, the year of the Asian readathon thing, too. So I could check that off two boxes, my urban fantasy and yeah. my Asian author for the year. So it's really funny. Like, I think, like, genuinely, maybe we'll put that in for April. Maybe yeah, that'll be one of the um, right. Speaking of our next books we're going to be reading, this is the book for March. Yeah. We have Night Chaser by Amanda Boucher. It's it is so kind of sci fi, though. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit different because it's sci fi. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it could be fantasy-ish. I don't know if there's yeah. magic in it, but we're it, it fits the bill. Yeah, yeah. And I like it. Like I know her her other series is kind of weird, like the the Greco Roman mythology that has like this very modern urban dialect in it, which annoyed my nitpicky little heart half to death. But this <laughs> one is so much better than that one, and I did make it like halfway through book three of that one, so it's really good. I'm like I I read it three months ago and I'm already about to read it again because I'm super, I love that book. Yeah. I think I got like book three of that series in like, I got an arc of it, but I don't, I haven't read the other two, so I haven't read it. <laughs> Just sitting on my shelf. What is it? The, um, I can't even find my bookshelves that are hot ass mess right now. It's a promise of fire or something yeah. like that. I don't yeah. know. There's like too many books above my head that I can't, I can't even look through it. <laughs> like, believe it or not, like I am still, okay, so um, I have wall to wall bookshelves back here. You can't see right now as it's stacked. This I have books under my laptop, which is why it's wobbling. I have books stacked here, like this high. I have books behind it, books right here, books on the floor there, books on the floor there. I still don't have enough bookshelves. I have like six. What the fuck? <laughs> There's never enough bookshelves. No. You're gonna have to build bookshelves out of books. <laughs> <laughs> the only worry is that because my dogs are small, like I don't want them to pee on my bookshelves. So I'm putting like the unimportant ones <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> but I still need 
I have two whole bins of books in my closet, guys. Like the big Rubbermaid ones, like this big. Wow. And two or three bins full of paperbacks. Like, I have a fucking problem. And my mom's like, get rid of them. I was like, fuck that. No. <laughs> like, that's not an option. I'm sorry. No. She's very much like that, though. Like, she'll trade her books and she'll read them, get rid of them. I'm like, I liked it. I might want to read it again. I'm keeping it. Both of us are looking at each other like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I was looking at the little blurbs on the back of Night Chaser. Mm. And one of them is from Jennifer Estep. And one is from D Dorinda Jones. And Jennifer Estep was one of the other picks for. That's hilarious. I and did Dorinda not know just that. Read. So I think maybe this was the perfect choice. <laughs> that is hilarious. They all responded to that tweet. And I was like, what? Yeah. What? Like, Sorry, that didn't never happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. so let me know, like tweet all of us. No, tweet the Book Spirits Twitter page because like my engagement on there right now fucking sucks. <laughs> let me yeah. know if you guys seriously want to do the movie thing or any other things you might want to see us do or add to the book club or to the channels, the Twitter pages, etc. Because always open for suggestions, always, always. Yeah, like we're down to do fun things if you guys want to watch us do fun things yes. if you guys want to join in and chat we're down to do it always always let's see um no other comments okay i got yeah. it i think people are out of comments unless you guys want to say something get it in now otherwise yeah. i think we might be wrapping up winding up here in a bit I'm trying to think of yeah i have nothing um, but we'll see. Like, I keep waiting for somebody to be like, let's read Cressley Cole's books. And be like, fuck yes, let's read all of them. I I would reread. Every single <laughs> like, one of them I would reread. Like, her. I haven't. So. Uh, Brandy, you haven't read, read them? Words? No, I haven't read a lot of stuff. You guys are like my introduction. Remember when we started reading uh, Chloe Neal's book? And I was just like, I have not read most of this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm. Most of it, I'm like, okay, let me jump into this. Yeah, and I've just been ping ponging back and forth between a whole bunch of different series. The good thing though is that they're quick reads. So like the Cressley Cole books, I remember when I first got into them, like I read the first like nine of them in like three days. Oh, wow. the same with um, <laughs> Janine Frost's books, and the same with uh, the K Daniel series. Like you will, I like when i really get into urban fantasy series i'm like well you know i gotta go to work but like fuck that because i'm about to read <laughs> like today yeah i started reading cresley cole when i was in college mm -hmm. and i remember like bringing the book to school but being embarrassed still because it had like the romance novel covers mm -hmm. like now i'm an adult i'm like i don't give a fuck i'm yeah. gonna read my porn all day like yeah. whatever but like in college i was like <laughs> like scared but i was just like i've I couldn't stop reading them. It was. Oh, I was the worst. Like I gave no fucks. I would read sane books and take them to school in like eleventh grade with no <laughs> like with the cover on. I didn't give a shit. My soccer coach would be like, "What are you doing?" I remember this to this day. He'd ask me, "What are you doing reading that perverted old lady's book?" I was like, minding my own business. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I yeah, probably I would not actually read her books like out in public now, but I just like I did not give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, the invention of ebooks, and like then I could just I could read my porn all day, and no one's gonna know. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> that's usually what I do. But I had a paperback of a new adult that's you know one of the shirtless guys. I took it to work, and my boss came, and she was like, "What are you reading? Oh my god!" I was just like, <laughs> "Really?" I was just like, "It like ten times older than me, or well, not ten times, like ten years at least older than me." Please stop acting so childish about it. It's a book. Let me read my book. Yes. Who was actually scandalized? I'm like, there's nothing showing. Relax. New <laughs> comment from Lizbeth. She says, hello, I got here late. How about Cheryl and Kenyon? Oh, yes, please. The only problem yeah. with her books is that they're not as quick of a read as other urban fantasy books. And there's like 37 of these months. <laughs> you know, I haven't finished the series yet. Like I've read like the first certain however many books, but I haven't finished it. So. Okay. I read the in order and I am up to the newest one, Stygian, Stygian, Stygian. I have not read it because the last three books are all regurgitations of like the two books before that. So I'm kind of bummed about that. Like the dragon book are all like the same book from a different point of view, which is really frustrating. That's 37 new levels of spot. I, like <laughs> I like it. I like it. Is there 
Um, sorry. Have you guys read um, the series by Larissa Ione? Only the first book. And then I read the first book in the spinoff. What is it? The Apocalypse one with the horse? Oh, yeah. Lords, or Lords of Deliverance or something. Uh-huh. I forget. It was like Lord of something. It was like the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I don't know why I didn't read the second one because if I remember, they're like underground demon hospitals and I really yeah. fucking like that. It's like demon ER. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you like Grey's Anatomy and you like demons? Huge book. <laughs> we should. They're, they're very smutty. Like, very smutty. They're incubus demons. They gotta fuck to live. So. <laughs> oh, like the sin. What are they called? Simonist something or other, or was that another series? I could be confusing it. The cinnamonist, like the flavor. No, they're like cinnamonist demon something. It's like it's supposed oh, to be like. Yes, they're seminist demons. And I got it from somewhere. There's another one too, Donna Grant's. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I've heard of her like dragony series, but I haven't read anything else. So they're like, those are a little, they're different, but I like them too. Cause I think they, they, what are they? They own like some kind of like whiskey plant, whiskey distillery, something or other. Those are really good. Oh, okay. This isn't the first book of this series, but it's like our alien huntress series. So I'm looking at those, you know what? I really like this series and there's this thing in it because this is like post-apocalyptic a little bit. Well, not post-apocalyptic, like aliens have come to earth and there was a huge war. So like natural resources are very scarce and like water is super expensive. So they invented um, showers that are dry enzyme sprays. And like, I think about that literally on a daily basis. Like how cool would it be to walk in your shower and you push a button and it's a dry enzyme spray. Oh, I took out my thing. Hold on. <laughs> um, and like, it cleans your clothes, it cleans your body. And it's like it took two minutes and you're like done. And cars drive themselves. So I think about the technology in this series quite a bit. <laughs> Hers is another one I don't read like straight through. It's something with her characters. Like I skip around with like my favorite characters. So I have a bunch of hers and I haven't read them yet. And it's the same with the... Uh... Christine B. Hand's books. I have a fuck ton of her books. And I've read like 20% of them, I think. Yeah. I've been wanting to read the Fever series too by Karen uh, Monning. Ooh. Those That's are good. There's a little bit of, um, what is the love interest from the book we read last month? Shit. The what? The Grim Re no, she's the Grim Reaper. What is he? I don't know. The demon dude. I forgot he was his name like already. The Antichrist. He was like the son of the devil. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of him and like the love interest from the character uh, in the Fever series. But mm -hmm. I didn't finish that series. I really liked it. But when the spinoff came, I was not interested enough to read the spinoff. I think that would be a good one to read too. It does have some weird like sexual things in it that are like borderline with like consent. Mm. It's like that. It's it's kind of like um, an Akamath with the fairy wine thing. It's like they put someone on. It wasn't wine though. It was some kind of like enchantment or something, and like some things happened to her. I didn't really care for that, and that's later on in the book. But like the rest of it, I, I like. But that that one gets a little weird, like consent wise. Yeah, that's always a problem. Yeah, I don't know. I think we should read like a good smutty book. Like I, we haven't really had like a good smutty one yet. We haven't. And I, when I set out to read this, it's like it started this, like what was it, like September? That's what I just wanted, was like a good smutty book. And then I kept picking stuff, and I was like, there's literally no smut in this. What the fuck? <laughs> I think my next month's possible pick might be one because I think I've heard you talking about it before, but we'll see. Yeah, we need you to pick let a me paranormal romance. We need to pick a paranormal romance. Yeah, we even I'll like look towards urban, urban fantasy more. Urban fantasy could that. have smut, but it usually doesn't. So that would leave us with what? Um, Chris and Cole. Sometimes they have smut in them, but there's usually like one instance of smut, and it's like in the last quarter of the book because they usually fight it the whole book. Cresley, um, like Cresley, they be fucking. Like there's a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what does not, I don't know, I think most of the ones I have toe the line between the two. So like Sherilyn Kenyon's hers have smut, but again, that's an investment. They have lots it's of like smut. Like, fucking books <laughs> Her first ones are really, oh, we can do the, the I was going to say prereq, Jesus, sorry, I've been thinking about school. We can do the, the what was the first book, Fantasy Lover, which is not the first Dark Hunter book, but it's like an interesting yeah. series. That one has a lot of fucking smut in it because he's literally a sex slave. 
literally what about uh, that Alona Andrews that's not the Kate Daniel series, the other one you were talking oh. about? Because that's what I was thinking about picking. Yeah, that. This one? Because I just picked that up, yeah. Those, I don't, they, I've only finished the first one in the Edge series. Oh, that's not the Edge you're holding up. Those do. I like those. Okay. This one, the that's, first book doesn't, but like the second uh, book does. Yeah. I was like, that was going to possibly be my pick for next month because I just bought good. those from yeah, book outlet. Her, or her there's books, there's like some investment until her couples get together. So I think mm -hmm. it was like Curran and Kate was like book three or four. Yeah. This one is book two at least. So it's like quicker. Yeah. And it makes sense that they don't do it in book one, but like yeah. they, they get to fucking. So it's okay. But like her characters are so great. Like I literally didn't even mind the slow burn. Her characters are fucking incredible. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yay. Elizabeth said yes. I mean, sex slave bad, but in a book, sex slave is good. <laughs> like a, I don't know. Yeah. It like a inducted into white slavery kind of a thing because that would be bad, and I would not read that. But he was what was he like locked he in cursed. or something like that? He's yeah, like a sexual genie type. Yeah, you would cursed and like put into a book, and then if you like summon him out of the book, he's your sex slave for like a month, mm -hmm. and then like the only way to save him is like this thing and then like the woman who pulled him out this time she's like oh i don't want to have make you have sex with me La, i'm a nice person and then like she somehow is the one like in the prophecy to pull him out of this book and then like they get out of the book <laughs> sorry spoiler alert obviously it ends happily <laughs> <laughs> let's see there's those what else do we have solace does not have smut in it really it's kind of like it has little over. The, end. the last chapter they're having sex yeah there is, but like that's the last chapter. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I'm, I think all my paranormal romance is on my Kindle, which is why I keep looking over here. And I'm like, I don't have anything. I think it's on my Kindle. Um, there's this. What? I keep forgetting how short my mic is. Um, <laughs> there's this one by Ooh, Larry Adrian. These ones are good. They're kind of alien vampires, which makes no sense, but like it does. <laughs> I remember you talking about that. Yeah, the True Blood books. Surprisingly, not that smutty. Um, I read like so many of them in college. Like we were obsessed with it because my friend and I liked the show a lot. But mm -hmm. like, I think I read like 10 books or something in the last book. They spent like two chapters going antiquing. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I'm not <laughs> dealing with this anymore. Yeah, I was obsessed with the show until that bit. And like, literally, I'll never get this. She said, are you kidding me? I'm a fucking fairy. And I was like, turn off. I was done. <laughs> I was done. I was like, this show gets weirder and dumber. And I'm, I'm just, I'm done. Yeah. Um, Succubus Blues by Rochelle Mead. I have wanted to read because I like Vampire Academy. I have the first one and I haven't read it yet. It's just chilling on my shelf back there somewhere. I also have the Angel series, like the Rapture mm -hmm. and whatnot by J.R. Ward. Hers are smutty, mm -hmm. but they her plot tends to be. Um, okay. Anyway, I know I sent Lauren a copy of this, I think for a housewarming present. But no one's read this by Sassy Robson, sealed with series. And, and like legit is urban. There is, it's not like super smutty, but there is smut in it. You know what? It's Mine really is sitting on my nightstand. And I, when I was setting up to bring my computer in here, I was like, I need to put this up for a vote one of these months so I can read this book. Because now it's I feel like because there are so few urban fantasy choices, I feel like I need to not read any of them unless it's for book clubs. So I'm like, no, I can't read it yet until we pick it for book club. The club. Is, uh, <laughs> Patricia B Briggs, is she a paranormal romance, smutty author not, or no? No. No, no I don't know. <laughs> Just like I would say even less so than the uh, Kate Daniel series. And mm. Kate Daniel series is like really like very borderline. There's like a little yeah. smut when they finally got together, like three or four. And then after like, that, they maybe have like one sex scene in a book. Like that's sometimes how it is, but it's not like it's not a lot. Yeah. I need like I can't remember if these historical ones are smutty. I don't think they are. Then are the Anita Blake books smutty? Like I like Jenny just brought that up because I just got the whole series for like nothing at a library book sale. They are smutty as fuck. Shut <laughs> up. So, okay. We might where they go. Damn it. <laughs> So the thing with the um, Laurel K. Hamilton books is that her books very quickly descend into like orgy territory. So they like go from, <laughs> oh my, what is that author's name? It starts with a K and I can't think of it. Um, shit, but there's this one werewolf paranormal series that 
I didn't like, like as much because it just seemed like she was just having sex for the sake of having sex with all these characters and the Anita Blake series and the Mary Gentry series, which were both by Laura K. Hamilton, kind of go there. So the Laura K. Hamilton, I mean, the Mary Gentry series takes longer to get there. But it's like after a while, I think she was pregnant and with twins and each twin had like two a different dads. dad. No, two dads, apiece, two or three. Like it just, three. yes. Well, there's like two babies. <laughs> So like she was sleeping with all of her bodyguards because duty required that she have a kid. So then like at the end of it, it's just like, oh, well, all three of them are a parent to one of these kids. It's like, what the fuck is really weird. So that's, that's the thing. Like, there's, <laughs> like after the first two books, it gets really weird. Muddy and hockey. Tony. Coffee, like, no, hockey, like the like big sport. This is the sport. That's how I can talk about sports. <laughs> Assassin series? Huh, that sounds good. I mean, assassins are like urban fantasy territory. Yeah. I've heard the, the Jennifer S. Step books are, are good, but she also, like, her character is more of an anti hero than a hero. So I'm really interested in those. Ooh. Well, yeah, I like any heroes a lot. Yeah. And I got kind of thrown off a little when I tried to read one of them. She works in like a barbecue restaurant or something i don't know what it was something weird like it was word it was the same with the uh kim harrison books or something in the, yeah. the first book i got really thrown off i don't know we got a lot we got a lot of options we, we've established we, we we got this yeah. <laughs> we just we i think we all agree we need something smutty next month as like a smutty palette cleanser yeah no oh guild hunter yeah. by Nalini. Yes. okay book one in that series is fucking everything i swear to god and I it's read them I haven't read them. I've read like her contemporaries. Weird. I've only no. read the contemporaries by Nalini Singh. Okay, so the um no no no, no. the werewolf. The one. I read side changeling. I read the side changeling, the first one. So the side changeling ones in comparison to the Guild Hunter series fucking suck. Okay, is the Guild Hunter the ones with the angels? Uh huh. Okay, I have that one actually. I have the first one of that series. So like Raphael, who is the angel, uh, one of the archangels, the one that she's with in the series is like Casbreaker on steroids. He is such a dick, but she doesn't like let him get away with it. So he'll try to be a dick, and she's like, "Nah, dog, we're not doing that shit today. Let's do this <laughs> instead." I love it. Like we need to read these books. I'm only on book three, and I think ten or eleven just came out. So I really need to catch up with these books. So. Who suggested that? I love you. Who is that? Yes. Thank Lily? Lily? I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. Is it Lily or Lily Arif? That is a very yeah. good one. I love those books. Okay, yeah. so we need to do a vote. Let's start this shit now. I give people plenty of time. To vote. I'm getting excited. I want a smutty book because I've yeah. been trying for one. And I don't mind rereading them. Okay, which ones are our tops? Like, I think the Guild Hunter book, whatever the first one is, I have it somewhere. Hold on, let me find it. The Anita Blake ones, if people don't mind, like, the fuckery later on. Like, the plot of the stories is really good because there's, like, the Seely Court and the Unseely Court, but just, like, later, there's a lot of, like, sexual stuff that it just is for the point of being there. Yeah. I have, I have this one, and I have this one. I don't know if these are the first ones or not. I think the one in your hold up the first, the yellow one again. I think is the first one. Archang uh, Angel's blood. I think so. It's either the first or the second. I have them the all. As well. I was so obsessed with them. I was like, well, I'm just going to waste all my money and purchase the whole series today. <laughs> <laughs> so we have okay. So we have one pick so far. Yeah, that um, is the one. Which was another one that we were like, oh, that's really smutty. We should do it. Anita Blake was one. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'll grab it. Hold on. I, was gonna say, I think I have them, but I'm not sure. So maybe next time I should do this shit closer to my bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> where are they? It would help if I knew where. Oh, I have fever down here too. Hold on. It was okay. You guys are giving me all the good book recs because I know nothing. You. I have okay, like so one of the fever series in hard copy. Oh, I have those, but I have to dig it out. I forget where they are. <laughs> I just have the one. Like the rest of them are on my Kindle. Is it smutty though? Is the Fever series smutty? It's one of those that's not smutty in the first book. There's just a lot um, of weird sexual tension. Okay, so we have two smutty oh, ones yeah. so far. Um, which is another third smutty one? Here's, here are the um, Anita Blake ones. These are the, I got not this Anita one. Blake, sorry, the Meredith Gentry ones. You have the Anita Blake ones. 
I have the Mary Gentry ones too. Like I have all of her books. I haven't read them because I'm a monster. <laughs> I haven't read like the Anita. She, I think she finished with these. But the, is this an Anita Blake one? This one looks like Anita Blake. No, it's not. It's Mary Gentry. The Anita Blake ones, for some reason, I never read. And I think it's because she started with that orgy fuckery earlier on. But these like actually have a plot in the beginning of them. <laughs> so I have not read the Anita Blake ones. So if you guys want to read that, that would be a new one for me. Okay. So, so far we have two picks. We need one more. We already have our like April picks. <laughs> I'm okay with oh oh um fantasy lover. Yes, that was it. I have that I one have, too. I know I have that book, but it's on my paperback section, which is way the fuck. Hold on. Fantasy lover, I got it right here. We're good. Uh, on it, but I went too far. I was like, eh, fuck that. <laughs> Boom! Three books. Three books. We're good. Okay. I'm down. <laughs> I need to like write these down because my ass will forget. <laughs> Hold them up. Okay. Screenshot. Screenshot. Okay, I'm talking, so I'm like the big part of the screen now. Got so it. Take a shot. Okay. Make a Twitter thing. <laughs> I'm excited now. Yay! I haven't had a crazy butt in a while. I and just want to talk about smutty looks. Like chat. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's April's gonna be fun. We're gonna have hey. smutty delights. Yay! I'm here for. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah, this was a productive chat. <laughs> I think we did not talk about the book we read very much. <laughs> no. But it's okay. We could talk about whatever we want. It's our channel. La yeah. la la. <laughs> um, okay. Anybody have anything else to say about the book? If not, maybe we'll start wrapping up. Yeah. Not I. Obviously. Not I. <laughs> I think we've said everything we need to say. There's not a lot more to say because there's not a lot more depth. <laughs> yeah. delve in, I so. need more like African American or Afro Latinx vampire, just paranormal books in general. Yeah, I agree. I'd love to do that. There's, there's so much like cultural and like even this mythology. There's so much like the well is very deep to pull yeah. from because no one's pulling from it. And I would love yeah. to read something like that. Like even one that's like more modern day, like how Cresley Cole had all of these. Um, current all these current events and things like alluded to and made fun of in her books like Britney Spears references and all that other shit like imagine the hilarity we would get in one of those books right now yeah but. um I mean like okay although okay sorry I'm just like I keep contradicting myself in my own brain and you guys don't know what I'm contradicting <laughs> Alona Andrews does have like Baudas which is an African yeah. myth because they're hyenas True. but all of the bowdas in the book are white people. So like, mm, there's a missed opportunity there. <laughs> I do like though that hers, there's, she has like all these cultures. It's just like Sherilyn Kenya, there's all these different pantheons. So like they get included, but I need one that's like- The main focus. Yeah. Instead of like grazing the surface. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll all just like have to write it together. <laughs> It'll be great. I'm down. Okay, I'm so we have down. April picks already. We have our March pick, Night Chaser. <laughs> oh, by the way, people in the chat or people watching this later, um, it is available on Hoopla as an ebook. And if you guys have Scribd, it has the audiobook. So it is available for free ish. Mm -hmm. So um, just in case you don't want to go buy it, like I got mine from my library, but it is available on those sites. So I figured I'd just tell people where to get it. And. We all kind of thought this was a failure. Yeah. <laughs> Just to wrap up. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We're going to pick a good book one time and just all freak out about it. Because I think the last <laughs> two we haven't like been crazy about. Yeah. yeah I'm waiting for it. Like, the, I think the first one was the very first one that I did, Trail of Light. It was good. After that, it was just like, eh. Then yeah. nobody liked the was it the Janine Frost series, the Dracula ones. I was like, what is wrong with you people? I no, I love that. I got all the rest of the books in the series after reading that one. You liked it? Okay, good. Yeah, no, I, I haven't read like, them yet, but uh -huh. I liked it. Okay, uh, the name of the author for March. I don't know if that's what Lizbeth is asking, but it's Amanda Boucher, and it's Night Chaser. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know what the book's about, it's kind of like sci-fi. It's almost like Robin Hood, which she is stealing from this corrupt government to give to people who need. And it's a really good book. She's basically an outlaw on the run with her little crew of like outlaw bandits. It's a really good story. 
I feel like it's a little bit like I'm gonna have to have two Harrison Ford characters. It feels a little like Indiana Jones and a little bit like Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, but it kind of is. It kind of is definitely all Harrison Ford all the time. <laughs> and the, like, the love interest is like starting to when he meets her, like she pops up on his list of wanted people because he is a bounty hunter as a second job because he's broke. So he starts to fight with like, do I turn her in? But I really like her, so I'm gonna help her until I figure out whether or not I want to like turn her in or not. So. It's pretty cool. It's not like this weird fake tension for the point of there just being tension. I really enjoyed that book. I think I read it in one sitting. Oh, okay. Well, we'll all catch up and you maybe are you gonna reread or just go from memory? No, I'm gonna reread. I'm interested to see how you think about it on a second read. Yeah. Sometimes you're gonna catch things you didn't catch the first time. And that's what I like to do, like why I like rereading books that I like, because it's the same with Alona Andrews. I'm constantly catching stuff when I reread her, her books. And I reread hers and Patricia Brayman series like at least <laughs> every year. Yeah. And I'm always catching stuff, so. All right. Okay, so we have an exciting two months planned. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be dope. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you guys get the scoop early, people watching this, because you know where we're picking for April. People who haven't watched this don't know yet. But um, yeah, this was a fun chat. I'm excited for our next two books, whatever they're going to be. Yes, I'm ready. And yeah. Thank you for joining, ladies. Yay. <laughs> Yay. No, All I'm right. Um, struggle in the beginning. We're good now. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you everyone who like put comments and joined the chat. We like talking with you. It was really cool seeing like live time chats. Cause last time I didn't get to, so my computer didn't work. I had to use my phone. So I was just like, I don't know what anyone's saying. Now I know all of the things. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I lost my mic again, cause I'm a klutz. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining. This was a fun chat, so. We will see you guys again for our next live show. And I believe that's going to be on Brandy's channel. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. If everything goes according to plan. Because then, no, no, I think we have got it this time. Damn we it. got it this time because we had so many technical difficulties. <laughs> Getting this up. Okay. Whew. All right. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop the broadcast. <laughs> you just have to say bye and like mean it. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. bye. <laughs>